What's poppin' homies? It's your favorite homegirl that's cool. Let's get into this commentary. What's poppin' homies? It's your favorite homegirl gossip girl. And today I want to talk to you about the DeAndrea Funches case. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, a 25-year-old man was arrested months after his girlfriend and the mother of his two children was found dead and what the police initially said was a fatal drug overdose. Now, according to the Cincinnati police, on February 15th at 2.50 a.m., officers went to, went to their home for a deceased person call. Police determined the victim was unresponsive and the Cincinnati Fire Department officials declared her dead at the scene. She was identified as 24-year-old Deandra Funches. Now, the Hamilton County Coroner's Office reportedly determined she died by homicide. Now, on July 13th, Cincinnati Police Department arrested Mazio Arnold in the connection with the Deandria death. Now, DeAndrea Funch's mother was told at first that she died from a drug overdose, but she said that cause of death never, never made sense to her at all. DeAndrea family had reported been reportedly reportedly, excuse me, been in contact with Arnold in the months following the young mother's death so she could talk to her grandchildren. Now, Mazio and DeAndrea had two children together. The court record cited by WXIW said DeAndrea was actually internally decapitated, which means she was beaten so badly that her skull separated from her spinal column. Oh, my gosh. Mm. That is just really sick. To me, that's really sick. That's really sick. And the fact that DeAndrea's mom was still in contact with him, you know, because she wanted to speak to the grandchildren, she found out, you know, later on how her daughter really died by the hands of Mazio Arnold. You beat her so badly that she was decapitated internally? Like, what's going on here? I just don't understand it. I really don't. They have two children together. It seemed like domestic violence is now ending these women's lives. You know what I'm saying? He beat her to death. That's what he did. He beat her to death. But I'm glad they got him. He's in custody. He's in jail. And he's being charged with her murder. So I'm glad he's in jail. But the next case that I'm going to talk to you about, this guy is not in jail. As a matter of fact, he's still on the run. Okay? I want to send my prayers and condolences to the Andrea Funches family, you know, to her children. This is hurtful. And it's terrible. Now the, the children don't have neither parent because their dad is going away for a long time, probably for life. Okay. And the mom is deceased. It's just, they're going to have so many questions asking about their mom, you know, as they grow up in the years, you know, how was she for you to take somebody's life and away from their children? You are a monster. If you can beat somebody to death, you are a monster. If you can just kill somebody and think you're going to get away with it, you are a monster. And I'm not talking about killing somebody in defense. I'm talking about just cold-blooded behavior. You are a monster. Now, this next case that I want to talk to you guys about a mother was shot 14 times by her ex-boyfriend in front of her children. In front of her children. She was shot 14 times in front of her children. A Wisconsin mother said her ex-boyfriend shot her over a dozen times in a violent attack caught on camera. She says she believes she's alive now because her children, her young children, stepped in to stop their father. 
when Nakia Shoemake watched a surveillance video from the day her former boyfriend chased her down and shot her 14 times on July 23rd, she didn't break down until she saw her children step in to keep their dad from killing her. I would like the whole video to play so people can understand from my point of view and from my kids' point of view, she said. Now, in the video, Nakia ex-boyfriend, who police said is 32-year-old, Askia Strong keeps shooting when she was on the ground. The ex-boyfriend turns to run away. Then he comes back and shoots several times more to finish the job. But guess what? He didn't finish the job because she's alive. Baby, she is alive. He just kept shooting. And I fell to the ground and laid there and let him keep shooting until he was done. My gosh. Ooh. Oh, my God. could you imagine just laying there and your body is being shot 14 times and you feel, I can't even imagine, but I want to say this. Thank God she's here. I'm, I'm so glad that she's here. And you know what? It was not her time. It wasn't her time. I'm not saying for anybody. it was anybody else's time. 14 times. Some people don't survive that. A lot of people don't survive 14 shots. But this mother survived 14 shots. And I really do hope they catch this SOB. I really do hope so. But it took her children to intervene to get him to stop. Now, if those children wasn't there... He probably would have kept shooting until she was dead. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. But I'm glad she's alive to tell her story. And I'm so glad she's alive because her children are here with her. The children still have their mom. And not everybody is lucky like that. Let's get back to it. Now, now, as Nakia lies on the ground, numb and bleeding, her former boyfriend runs down the alley. She said her oldest child was there screaming out in anger. She just wanted him to stop. After being shot in the head, stomach, arms, and legs at close range, she still gets up. Still gets up. She said she was compelled to get back by the presence, you know, to get back up by the presence of her children. She was fighting through all that pain, the numbness, the bleeding. She got shot in the head, guys, in the head, the stomach, the arms, the legs at close range. And this woman, Nakia Shoemaker, was still getting up because she was compelled to get up. Because her children was in her presence. She said, when I opened my eyes and I seen my baby, my eyes were able to focus. So I just got up a little bit and I was like, oh, I can stand. I can stand up. And then I just stood up all the way, she said. Whew. Mm -mm -mm. Then I grabbed my babies and I saw a lady. She was just sitting there watching. So I went to her car and I opened the, and opened her door and I pushed her laundry over and I was like, can you please just take me? Nakia said she and her ex had been dating for 17 years since they were both 15 years old. She said he was in and out of jail and their children ages are 12, 5, and 2. They have, they have witnessed him abuse her for the last several years and that's no good for those children to see that. This domestic violence stuff, I'm telling you, is getting worse and worse as time goes on. And the ages is getting younger and younger. Nakia says she broke up with him a few days before the shooting. And that's another thing. These guys these days, they can't take it when you leave them. Oh, when you broke up with them? It's very dangerous now in this day and age to break up with a guy. Because you never know what he's going to do. You never know. It's like they can't take it. Men think it's like this thing and age, men can't take rejection. 
They can't take it if you no longer want to be with them. So now they're in their feelings about it and they're trying to hurt you. They're trying to kill you. Who does that? Who said that I have to be with you for the rest of my life if I don't want to? Especially if you're beating on me. Who said? So, oh, don't break up with you. Continue to be with you so you can beat on me until you kill me. So before this shooting, she broke up with him a few days before it. Now, after he fled down the alley on July 23rd, the ex-boyfriend is still on the run for attempted homicide. That's, and that was the police said. The Milwaukee police said they believe Strong is hiding with friends and family in Wisconsin, Illinois, or Indiana. Nakia says she just wants to see him arrested. She says she is a hero for being able to move on from that moment. Yes, you are. I feel that I'm a hero. The moment I get up off the ground, I was a hero, she said. It was a victory for me from that point on. Girl, go ahead and pop your ish. You pop it. You are a hero. Nakia says she is now focused on protecting her children from her ex-boyfriend and helping other women in abusive relationships. Now, authorities are hoping for tips that will lead to his arrest. Now, I'm going to say this. If there's any friends of his or family hiding him, release him because he could have killed this girl, this woman. He, he could have killed her. And if you are hiding him, you are just as foul. And you need to be arrested. Turn him over. He almost killed someone. And that's the mother of his children. He shot her 14 times. So if anybody is hiding him, that's a crime. You can't do that. He is a fugitive. He is wanted. He is wanted. Turn him over to the police. <sighs> All right, you guys, you know, keep the families in your prayers. You know, like I said before, I'm so glad that Nakia, she survived her attack. And, but he was really trying to kill her. And it just wasn't meant for her to go at that time. And her children had to step in and intervene. These kids seen enough, you know, this domestic violence stuff, man, is just, it's just gotten out of control. And as for De DeAndrea Funches, you know, her murderer is in jail. Thank God for that. But as Kia Strong, he is still out there. And please, just turn him in. Please turn him in. He doesn't deserve to be out in the streets. He doesn't. Not what he just did to Nakia. He doesn't deserve to be out in the streets and be a free man. So whoever is holding him, or if anybody is holding him, please turn him in. Okay? You guys, I will talk to you later. Have a good one.